Yo, what's up everybody, how's it going? Today, I want to ask, what is Autonauts? Autonauts is a game that got released on Steam last Thursday. I sadly am only now getting around to making a video on it because, uh, and I don't know if you can tell, but I've been sick, my voice still hasn't fully recovered. I apologize for that, uh, but I really want to show you this game, so I thought, let's go ahead and, you know, uh, let's get this video done as quickly as we can. So, Autonauts is a really interesting uh, kind of like management simulator, although I don't really think that's the right description for it either. I'll just show you what it is. Uh, it, it's really, really kind of neat. But before we do that, uh, we got ourselves our settings here, right? Uh, it's really not much here. This is something that I'm not a big fan of. It's just doesn't really let you do much. Um, but that's okay. It's not really that important for a game like this. The graphics are fairly simple. So having simple settings is actually fine. Now, before we load into the game that I've been playing, we're going to go into uh, a new game setting here really quick because I want to show you some stuff. So uh, in this game, you start on a planet and then you try to colonize that planet. Now, there's actually three different game modes. There's colonize where you kind of work your way through a tech tree. Then there's free where you have access to the whole tech tree from the very beginning and you can just kind of build whatever you want. Then there's creative where you have unlimited resources, the whole tech tree, and you can also just do whatever you want, right? Now, um, you can actually kind of like randomize what kind of planet you're starting on. And uh, you can also input a seed for that. You can give it a name, right? You can uh, disable or enable the tutorial. You can say if you want a small planet or a big planet. And I think that's really cool. Like, uh, I, I like that, you know, you will always have a different experience. Um, and it's just something to keep in mind. So even if you're playing uh, for the first time, you know, you might want to just kind of like roll through a little bit until you find a planet that you actually think looks cool. Right? Uh, ideally, something that doesn't have too much water from my experience, but admittedly, I haven't gotten super far yet. Uh, even though I have played 12 hours of this game by now, so it's not like I haven't played it at all. So let's go ahead and load into a little bit of Autonauts. Right? So this right here is my little little town. You can see I've got a, a lot of robots, and that's really what this game is about. So in this game, what you do is you have your little guy here. Right? This is me. Where, where am I? There, there I am. Look, well, this is me right here. And you build stuff. And the stuff you build, well, the first thing you want to build is actually a robot. So these right here, these little robots, they're all over the place. And you can see I have a lot of robots. And they're all kind of doing different tasks. So right here, I've got a bunch of robots doing mushroom farming. I have a bunch of robots here doing weed farming. These guys are uh, running a forestry. I've got a second forestry over here. These guys are mostly responsible just for like sorting materials and managing materials. These guys are turning logs into pallets and pallets into into poles and then these guys are um, getting a stone right and over here we are using stone and sticks to create tools and it's just kind of like there's a lot happening right now up here you can see there's a bunch of robots fishing right and this is my fish storage and then there's my my kitchen kind of where i've got a bunch of robots um, chopping the fish and turning it into sashimi and then here's my village with people and I'm you, you know taking the sashimi and feeding it to the people now you may notice that all of this is actually automated I am not doing anything anymore um, in fact this entire town is actually fully automated at this stage I, I really have to do pretty much nothing um, now that automation that's really what that's really what uh, Autonauts is all about and uh, let me go ahead and show how show you how that works and uh, yeah it's actually really neat so for our purposes here I think the best thing we can do is maybe we can uh, go ahead and set up some sort of new farming location of sorts right uh, because right now I'm still at a point where really I'm just trying to gather a lot of resources now you may notice that I have a lot of robots <laughs> <laughs> That's because I taught the robots how to make more robots. <laughs> and if you teach the robots how to make more robots, they will make a lot of robots. 
<laughs> in fact, so every, like, you can see all of these robots, they're kind of, like, blinking like this a little bit. Like, this, there's not enough space for all of the robots. So you may notice that the last robot down here, it's not blinking, it's just glowing really aggressively. That's because there's just a lot of robots stacked in that one spot and it's just all blinking <laughs> because they're all blinking you know like the light is just adding up and it's just turning into this one really glowy robot so uh let's go ahead and uh teach one of our robots something i just got myself a new tool right here i got myself a crude scythe right and uh let me go ahead and uh well, see if we can teach a robot how to use this thing. So what do I do with this crude scythe? Well, the first thing I do is I find something to use it on. Now, the game can actually help you with that. So you can see that uh, when you hold old, the game will kind of tell you what you can use, what you currently have in hand on. So you can see it doesn't doesn't work with that, doesn't, doesn't work here, no, no, no. But I can use it on this, fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and go up here and chop this up. And when I do that... It will turn into cereal. Great, right? So we have this now. Uh, I do have a cereal storage over here as well. Uh, it's a little bit far away. We can change that later. Um, but yeah, that's that's great, right? That's fantastic. So let's go ahead and get started by uh, getting one of our bots to chop up some cereal. Oh, also, we just uh, got ourselves some new technology. Again, this is all fully automated at this stage. I'm not really doing anything. It's just the robots. <laughs> so, first what we need is uh, we need a robot, right? So let's go ahead and grab ourselves one down here, right? And then we do that by pushing spacebar. Uh, now we have the robot's attention and we go ahead and click teach. So now the robot will do whatever we tell the robot to do, right? So, uh, for example... If we now click on this crude scythe to pick it up, right? You see our character will pick up this crude scythe and then the robot will learn, oh, okay, you want me to pick up a crude scythe in this area. You want me to move there and you want, want me to pick it up. Then if I now click on this cereal crop here, the robot will learn, okay, let's move there, find the nearest cereal crop, move there and then use the held item. Perfect. And that's it. Then I can go in and click repeat and now the robot will just repeat doing this forever now right now this robot can't find a crude scythe in this area because i took it <laughs> right like i have it in my hands but if i now be to like put one here you can see the uh, the robot has now found it we'll go in there we'll pick it up we'll start moving into the cereal crop uh locate or like to the cereal crop location chop it up and uh then we've got ourselves some cereal crops Right, which is pretty much, uh, yeah, that's, that's what we're looking to do. So, similarly, I can now say, okay, let me go ahead and get myself another robot here, right? And this robot, I want to pick up this cereal and I want it to deposit, I want the robot to deposit it into this cereal storage. You can do that very easily. I can go in here, grab the cereal, right? So now he's finding the nearest cereal. I can even define this area so I can like make it bigger, I can move it around, right? And then I go and click over here and just say, I want you to dump it in there. So we're going to go ahead and run in to uh, run to that location and then just toss it in. Perfect. And then we repeat. Now, the way we have set this up right now, what the robot will do is again, find the nearest cereal in this location, move to it, pick it up, then move to zero storage free and add it in. Now we can actually do that better because this game lets you specify things a lot more. So for example, what we can do is we can kind of move these out. And instead of saying repeat forever, we can say until hands are full. So you can see there's like a bunch of different options here. So you can see until held object is full, until, you know, question mark is full, until hands empty. But we're going to go ahead and use until hands full. So now what the robot will do, there is the robot will go into this location, pick up cereal until it can't carry anymore, and then it will move out of this loop into the next thing. So now we can say, okay, we want another loop, but this one, we don't want forever, right? Because then it will just get stuck in it. We want to do this until our hands are empty. Now it will pick, uh, grab the cereal that we just picked up, move it to this location, and then add it to that location until it no longer has any cereal in its hands. And then because we want this whole thing to be repeated forever, 
we just click repeat forever. So now you will see that this robot that we just taught a bunch of stuff, right? It's gonna move over to that location, pick up a bunch of cereal. Yeah, that's good. And can we wait a little bit? There we go. Yeah, that's good. How much can you carry? All right, seems at least two. Can you carry three? These guys can usually carry three. Yeah, there we go. Now it's filled its hand up, hands up, so it can, got three, three of these cereals that it can carry, right? So it's uh, got its hand, hands full. Now it's gonna move over to this box and then toss them in. And you can always see exactly, you know, what the robot is currently doing. Toss us all three in. Now our hands are empty. It's told, oh, you need to repeat this whole motion forever. So now it's going to go back into this location, fill its hands up with, um, you know, as much cereal as it can, and then bring it back into the storage. So something you may notice as well, this is awful, an awful lot like programming. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and on that note, I actually think this is really the, the, the greatest merit of this game in general. I think this game is absolutely fantastic to uh, teach kids or, you know, teenagers like kind of like an understanding of programming like it's it's absolutely uh fantastic for that right like i myself i'm not a programmer so uh you know it's not like i have a deeper knowledge of of programming uh myself uh but i can still play this pretty well you know you can see i've automated a lot of stuff here right it's like a lot happening um and you know you can build some pretty complex chains of interactions right like this right here is something that <coughs> <coughs> it's maybe something that like a, a young kid won't necessarily do they might keep it a bit more simple but that doesn't mean that you know like the the simpler chain that i had earlier doesn't work you know that chain works perfectly fine so by the way we gotta go ahead and uh, wait i think there's a robot coming yes i have robots on charging duty <laughs> so anyway we are now out of cereal so this robot isn't gonna do anything anymore so what's wrong with this robot? Right, so you can see that this robot, we've actually made a mistake. This robot isn't actually chopping any stuff anymore. Hmm. Because, and this is really something that we put into its programming, um, we want to find the nearest crude scythe before we do any of the chopping. The problem is, there is no crude scythe. So because we just told it to, you know, always look for a crude scythe before it goes to, you know, chop any of the cereal, um, it is now looking for crude scythe. There is no crude scythe, so it's not gonna chop any cereal because it first needs to find a crude scythe. Now, that is something we can, of course, fix, right? So we can go ahead and just go in there and edit this. So, like, uh, something we can do is we can kind of like move this out of the loop, right? So now this is out of the loop. Um, but if we do it like this, it will only do this once and then be stuck in this loop forever, which is not ideal either, right? So what I like to do for my harvesters, and that's what this guy is, right? This guy is a harvester, um, is I like to do this until hands are full and then do this until hands are empty. And then we loop this again, which is similar to the bot, you know, setup we just saw. But what the bot will now do is it will, um, you know, chop cereal until its hands are empty, at which point that means that its uh, crude scythe that it's holding in its hand has run out of durability and broke. So now it needs to uh, go pick up a new one. And now, you know, as soon as it has a new one, it can then uh, go back to chopping cereal, right? And there we go. So now you can see that this bot will actually start just... Uh, Kind of keep doing this because right now this find the nearest crude scythe, this isn't being checked because its hands are full. Perfect. And now that it's chopping this, our bot that we put over here that is uh, on pickup duty is now going to go back to the cereal, start picking up the cereal, put it into the container and so on. So that at its core is what Autonauts is all about. Um, it's about kind of building these chains of interactions and kind of trying to build like a civilization, building uh, like colonizing this planet. It is very much built for children, I believe. Um, it's, and I, I don't think that's at all a bad thing. And I think, honestly, like if you, even if you aren't a child, you can still find a lot of um, fun with this game, right? But like, it gives you all of these awards when you do something nice. You know, it's like the Autonaut Certificate of Awesome awarded to you, right, for lumber and forestry, right? Um, and uh, that's, you know, like that's totally not uh, fine, right? It got these the cute little models right here for everything uh, i do think that this game is something that was meant 
for children. Um, but despite that, uh, oh well, honestly, not despite that, but like I think that's actually a good thing, right? This is a great tool to give kids like a basic understanding of what programming is all about. And programming is something that's very important. It's something I, I feel like, you know, this this might appeal to to a lot of people. And this is something, you know, like if I had kids, I would be happy to give this game to them, right? It's it's kind of very innocent and it's it's kind of cute. And it's actually um, a perfect example to me uh, what you can do in terms of, you know, education through gaming. Um, so yeah, anyway. Of course, to kind of like move away from that thought a little bit, like how do you generally uh, progress through this game? So like right here, we've got ourselves our research upgrade. Um, we can uh, go in here and like we can say, okay, but well, what do we want to research? Do we want to research robotics technology? Do we want to research basic flooring, construction technology, masonry technology, farming technology? Like there's like a whole bunch of stuff. Cooking technology. Why don't we do cooking technology? So we go ahead and pick up some cereal. We have to add that in here. Right? And now we are researching cooking technology. For this uh, research, you need so-called colonist wolf. <laughs> right? Um, colonist wolf, again, to me, a strong indicator that this is very much a game that was made with uh, children in mind. But how do you get colonists move? Uh, well, you have your colonists over here, right? And uh, you can get colonists by... And honestly, this is kind of a little bit weird. But if you guys want to see how we make a colonist, then we can go ahead and make a colonist. So you go to this colonist seed dispenser, uh, dispenser, get yourself a colonist seed, and then put the colonist seed into this colonist incubator. And then you need to put a bunch of food in there. And then after you've got a bunch of food in the colonist incubator, um, you will get a colonist. <laughs> Which is... Huh. That's kind of a little bit weird, but I guess that's how it works. But then you got the colonists over here, and you can see, like, uh, as you upgrade things for them, they uh, will provide you, and as you, like, give them food, they will provide you with this colonist wolf, which they kind of, like, drop around here. And uh, I've got a bot just on pickup duty. So this bot right here is coming in, it's picking up this colonist wolf. And that's really all this bot does, right? Like, this bot goes in here, picks up this stuff, and then brings it back into the the cooking technology research although right now this bot seems to have uh oh yeah so you can see something this is a problem with how i set up this bot right i set up and this is kind of me being lazy but i find the nearest colonist wolf in this area but th this area is actually like much bigger now right now admittedly i set up this bot when i had less little colonists here but yeah this is just kind of me being lazy so let's go ahead and change this area Right, and there we go. Now, if I start the bot again, it should now be able to find the, the wolf around here and up there and be able to deliver it down there. Which, you know, it kind of makes sense. You know, it's kind of weird that there's no, like, <laughs> you know, none of these, these hearts that are kind of, like, scattered around here. They're all scattered up there. I have a little bit odd that that's how it went. Now this bot ran out of uh, energy, but we have charging bots all over the place, right? Generally speaking, what I try to do is I try to have two charging bots cover every area because what then ends up happening is that they recharge everything that runs out of battery in there. And if one of the charging bots run out of, runs out of battery, the other charging bot recharges it. Uh, sometimes it happens that one of your, like both of your charging bots run out at the same time. Uh, in those scenarios, you're going to have to go in there and just kind of fix it up yourself. But that doesn't happen too often. So, uh, you can, of course, uh, automate a lot of stuff. Like, I mean, the game is called Autonauts, right? That's what it's about. It's about automation, right? So, uh, you can see I've got my mushroom area. By the way, this mushroom area has been a nightmare. <laughs> Mushrooms, I, I just gotta go and give a bit of a recommendation. If you're gonna go ahead and play this game, don't bother with mushrooms as a food source. They, they, it's just not very good. Um, uh, sashimi. Right, like fish or uh, really, uh, I guess fish, right? That's the thing that really works for me here. But uh, sashimi works great. Uh, mushrooms do not. Uh, mushrooms are simply, they are too slow to grow. And if you have even a single robot, like feeding mushrooms to your colonists, then you're actually going to run out of mushrooms. That's what happened to me quite a few times. So right now, this is just kind of like a hobby project, I guess. Like, it's just a side project I got going on because I want, I like the mushrooms. But yeah. Anyway. So uh, over here, for example, what I have is I have a bunch of bots. Uh, and all they're doing is they're really uh, building this, like, flooring. Now, you may notice that in this flooring, 
Uh, there's all of these logs that are scattered around, so it seems we're doing fine on logs, but we do not have enough planks. Like, you know, these uh, blueprints here, they require two bl planks and a log, and that's not really fantastic, right? So what's the problem? Well, if we look at our uh, storage over here, you may notice we have a ton of logs. That's because we have two forest trees walking logs, so that's great. Um, but we're kind of running a little bit low on planks. And because we're running low on planks, because you need planks to create poles we're also kind of running a little low on poles and that's kind of slowing us down right we need planks to be able to construct stuff so how do we fix that well let's go ahead and build another um chopping block first right so you go into this menu down here and then you can build a bunch of stuff right and you build stuff by putting down a blue a blueprint so right here let's go ahead and put down another chopping chopping block right so perfect we're gonna need a log for that put that in there and then we need a crude axe which uh, we have plenty of we're gonna go ahead and put that in here as well Where, where's my little guy oh there you are <laughs> so now we have built another chopping block what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and grab ourselves another bot use this bot right pick up a log bring it to the chopping block All right, let's try this again. All right, so something isn't working the way I want it to. What am I doing wrong right now? I do have a log. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, have a look at this really quick. Oh, I didn't select the planks. Okay, I kind of thought it did that as a default. No, you have to select what it can build first. All right, so which bot was it? Yeah, this is the one. So we go ahead and delete this. We're going to go ahead and grab out those, these logs, put them in there. Now we are properly chopping it. Perfect. Right? Fantastic. And then we're going to also teach this, uh, this bot to pick up this plank and then deliver it to the plank storage. So, now, my bot brain, you can see up here, 3 kilobytes free. So there's actually a limit to how much stuff you can do here. So you may notice I could have picked up two planks, but I didn't. That's because it's actually uh, oftentimes better to keep things simpler because otherwise you might run out of memory now uh, right here for example what I can do is I can take all of this stuff out of here all right let me go and just find nearest blank and then move to plank storage all right so I've taken all of this stuff here and then I'll do this times two all right so now what's gonna do it's gonna uh, get the log chop it then pick up two of these planks and then we go and put another loop around there and do that forever and this is actually um this is actually like a better way of doing it instead of picking up two planks um because uh, otherwise actually we need to probably do it like this now i think we do still have memory we actually do still have memory wait let's do this properly okay uh <laughs> yeah all right it's getting a little bit tricky but we're gonna go ahead and put this here We'll do this times two as well. So now we have run out of memory. This is all this bot can store. But what it's now going to do, it's going to do the chopping, then pick up two planks, and then put those two planks into the storage. And then go back to chopping. And there we go. Now, if I were to try doing that same thing um, without those loops, then I would actually run out of bot memory. So let me just kind of go ahead and give you an example. So I pick up this, right? And then we put this on there. We chop it, right? And then we uh, pick up one log. We pick up a second log, a uh, second plank. We go here. And now if I want to add the second one, I'm actually out of memory. I can't do it. <laughs> right? So uh, optimizing that memory is actually really important. And again, this is where I really think the game just does a great job of teaching you these kind of things. You know, like it, it shows you what are options, what you can do. Right now, let me go ahead and uh, uh, delete all of this, move this bot over here. All right, but it, it kind of like shows you how to optimize these things. It shows you the value of like minimizing um you know these kind of loops and all of that and i think that's really 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 fantastic so yeah now we have increased our plank production right now as we kind of have to ask ourselves do we maybe want to increase it even more in that case you know we could kind of 
like take a bot like this and maybe maybe duplicate the loop. Um, now this is actually where I think uh, the, the game has a little bit of a weakness. So the only way to edit the bots is really by like performing these tasks for them. You you can't really edit bots just by you know going in there and editing them. And I personally find it a little bit irritating. By the way, it seems these bots have run out of. Um, charging here right so this is again was something that happens sometimes so if i go ahead and recharge this guy i assume yep you know he's gonna go ahead and recharge this guy because like i think this fella and this fella are both chargers now my little uh, area here or like my little town is very poorly managed i'm gonna go ahead and just be completely transparent about that uh, it's very, very poorly managed. Like, you can make teams, you can name your bots, right? So if you want to, like, go in here, you want to give your bot a name, you can be like, hey, this is this is Frank, you know, this is, this is Frank. Right now I got Frank in here. And you can kind of, like, you can see I kind of did it a little bit. Right, these are my forest workers, my lumberjacks. But then I got lazy and stopped doing it. <laughs> All right? Uh, but you can actually really, like, properly, like, organize everything and if, when you do like I'm, I'm sure that's gonna make things a lot easier in the long run for you by the way we got ourselves a colonist here like if you remember from earlier uh, here's, here's our little buddy that we are now carrying around but we've got all of our um you know like kind of like bots in here and as you can see my bot management is an absolute disaster <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna lie about that. So by the way, we have uh, found ourselves a situation where a bot ran out of battery. What I like to do in those situations, I actually grab a bot really quick and then I just go recharge it myself. Oh, never mind. Never mind. It seems that that doesn't matter. Because um, there's actually a recharger. Oh no, the recharger just ran out of battery. <laughs> Alright, let's just go ahead and fix that up really quick. Anyway. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. You know, like you work your way through a tech tree. Right? It's like all kinds of different stuff. And there's really a lot in here. Right? There's so much stuff in here. It's actually kind of crazy. Right? Like how much uh like general things they are. Right? Like uh it's really a lot you can build here. And uh, it's it's honestly kind of fantastic, you know, like later on you get to a windmill. And these kind of things. So I think overall this is a very, very, very good game. I, I really like it. I think it's something that um, has huge value as a teaching tool. I think it's something that has huge value uh, for kids, right? Um, so it's, I would consider this, you know, like kind of to be uh, an important game in that way. But at the same time, uh, and this is uh, maybe it's going to sound a little bit contradictory. It's not a game I'm going to continue playing. Um, I personally don't find these kind of games very enjoyable. And it is still a management simulator. You know, you're still all about you know, managing your little town here. You're still all about making sure that all of your bots are doing what you want them to do. And it's a lot of kind of like keeping track of what's happening. And, you know, like not creating nonsense like this. You know what I mean. Right. And and to me personally, that's not really what I enjoy the most in games. Um, but I think it's something that I can see why a lot of people would enjoy it. And um, so in that way, I would definitely absolutely recommend this kind of this game to you know anybody that's interested in these kind of games. All right. Um, and yeah, yeah I, I think it's really cool. Now, it does have some uh, some problems. Right. So as I mentioned earlier, like the only way to teach bots things is to like actually like do the stuff, which can be a bit annoying. Uh, because, you know, like, for example, we just built this chopping bot, and it's kind of like a complex chain of things, right? And I would like it if you could just copy it. So it even has this copy button here, copy script image to clipboard for sharing, right? Like, it even has this. What I don't really understand is why it doesn't have a way for me to take this script image and then import it into another bot. Like, that would make things a lot easier. Another thing is, you can't really uh, teach bots, uh, you know, for example, to recharge other bots, unless there's, like, an already not recharged bot, which can be kind of annoying, because I mentioned earlier, you know, as I mentioned earlier, ideally, for every location, you want to have two bots covering the location for recharging, um, but it can be a bit tricky, because you gotta, okay, so you wait until one of the bots has run out, and then you grab one of your bots to, like, go and recharge that other bot, and um, then when you do that, 
uh, it kind of ends up, you know, like now you need to wait until another bot has run out for you to be able to set up the second one. Uh, but then you are kind of competing for that one bot with your other recharging bot. You know, you have to get there before that bot does. And that can get a little bit irritating at times. So yeah, it has copy paste for bot. I think I, I couldn't get it to work. Like maybe maybe it does exist, right? Like, but I honestly, um, I have tried this quite a few times, and I just honestly couldn't quite figure it out, right? Like maybe maybe let's let's try this, okay? Let's let's see. Maybe we can find it, right? Uh, admittedly, like the fact that I haven't found it yet, I, I personally view already as kind of a bit of an issue. Uh, where is our bot? Also, when they get stacked like this, <laughs> well, we're kind of looking for the uh, for the fancy one that we just built, right? If I can find it, all right. Let's go and just kind of let the bots do their thing. There it is. That's the one. All right. So um, you can follow bot, right? Bot trade, which uh, allows you to kind of like put some stuff into the bot. But that's not really that important right now. Um, and then you can like copy script image to clipboard for sharing. But like I don't see a way to input this information into a bot. All right? Like you can put. Can I just copy paste? No. <coughs> There's an item which you can copy the code onto and paste it into another. It's called crude data storage. Oh, okay. So um. Oh, sorry. <coughs> Okay, so that's an item that I can build, but I don't think I have built yet. Oh my god, I'm sorry. <coughs> okay. Yeah, um, I don't know if I have that data storage thing yet. But I guess that does exist later on in the game, right? <coughs> so, uh, let me go ahead and just uh, save this right here. And then we're going to get out really quick. There's one last feature I want to show you before we're done here. And that is our recordings, which I think is actually a super cool thing, <laughs> which is, this is totally not necessary, but I just think it's really neat. So this is uh, that map that we were just playing. And this is a recording of how things happen. <coughs> so you can kind of see me figuring stuff out and learning how to go about it. All right, and and I think that's kind of interesting. Like like you can kind of go and review things, which is super super neat, right? Isn't that isn't that kind of really cool? And you can kind of see me putting stuff together. It is uh, very much <laughs> in fast forward, but I think that's totally fine, right? Like <laughs> I wouldn't want to watch this for twelve hours now, <laughs> right? But yeah, I think this is actually super neat. Um, this I don't really consider at all to be necessary, right? But I, I'm glad it is here. Right now, uh, you may notice me kind of like doing stuff. I'll, at this stage, I'm still doing everything on my own. You know, kind of like just going through and, and, and trying to build things as best as I can and setting things up. But I don't have that many bots yet which was like a problem I had. It's just like, you know, like uh, every time I want to automate something, I first needed to build bots and that was kind of irritating. So I kind of just let things go a little bit. And then eventually I started to um, automate bots. And <laughs> as soon as I automated the bots, things kind of went a little bit crazy. Also, this was a period of time where I was at the gym. Yeah, this game sometimes has um, wait periods. Uh, I, I I definitely definitely think so. Where sometimes you know, like your bots are just gathering resources or building stuff for you, and it's it's just best if you kind of wait it out. That's really all there is to it, right? Anyway, you can see over there now. I'm setting up the bot, uh, the bot makers. Right, and as soon as I set up the, um, you know, like uh, as soon as I taught the bots how to make more bots, things kind of started escalating, <laughs> because at that stage I just had access to basically infinite bots, and I was able to just like really enhance my, um, 
my systems very much by like automating so much of it. So if you're going to play this, I, I really recommend like set up like a bot maker as quickly as possible because uh, then you can just kind of go nuts. Right, like you could really like felt like the industrial revolution, didn't it? All right, like as soon as I got there, it just went crazy. Anyway, so yeah, that's Auto Lords. Uh, it is on Steam. I think it's about twenty bucks. Um, I would one hundred percent recommend this if this is the kind of game you're into, right? Uh, or if you have children and you want to kind of like teach them a little bit about programming, I guess, right? <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please let me know what game you would like me to do next. And I hope to see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.